Welcome to the one within all. You're listening to Interverse, season three, episode 26. I'm your host, Chance, and today my guest is the infectiously positive, incredibly energetic dynamo of enthusiastic love, Brandon Beecham, the host of the Positive Head podcast, where you can find on iTunes, SoundCloud, and many other platforms five days a week of creative consciousness expanding information. Brandon's background as a successful entrepreneur has allowed him to fully pursue his creative passions, which is sharing that information on a regular basis. And if five episodes a week doesn't clue you into how disciplined Brandon is, I fully expect our conversation to be one that leads all of us to an enhanced awareness of our higher self potentials. Brandon, my friend, I've been looking forward to this interview for many weeks now, and I want to thank you for the time you're sharing. Beautiful listeners, please shine your sparkly inner heart lights and of love in Brandon's direction as I say, welcome to the show, dude. Hey, that's quite the intro. Thank you, my friend. I've been looking forward to this for quite some time as well. And I knew it was going to be, I already know it's going to be an amazing session when we get on here and I can see you on video. And uh, not only do you have a staff behind you, and I have one right above me, uh, but you're also wearing the same amazing Chris Dyer love monster shirt, as I call it. Um, But uh, you have my same shirt and... uh, you have a crystal staff like right behind you. It's like reflections everywhere. Yeah, see, I've realized that you are a very close reflection and an extension of myself for quite some time as I've been listening to your podcast uh, here and there as I can find a 30-minute a chunk. And that's sort of a nice thing about it is there's so many different uh, topics and guests that you can jump into a shorter or a longer uh, bit of positive boosting. And it really does help elevate one's frequency to – be able to kind of get a handle of your thoughts and podcasts in general allow you to sort of quiet the inner voice that might be repeating negative mantras and instead focus on something that is uplifting and uh, helps you create a different experience. For sure. Yeah. I podcasting to me has become like, um, you know, such a perfect medium as I started down my own spiritual journey many, many years ago. And you know, as often happens when a person does, as you open up to more, uh, you know, letting your higher self in, as I would like to put it, um, you get shown uh, certain things about yourself and uh, certain revelations of things that you will do or are meant to do. And certainly helping to raise consciousness is something I felt a passion to do for quite some time. And really, it's just in the last, you know, what, three years, not quite three years ago since I, I launched my show. Um, you know, for many years before that, I thought, okay, I'm going to write. I'll do a lot of writing. And I've always loved writing, although I have a, a love hate with writing because I'm so uh, meticulous about it. And I'll sit there and re edit things and it's slow. And when I talk, I just, you know, I talk really fast. I think fast. I can just get out so much information. So when it kind of the, 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 uh, you know, aha light went on that, oh, maybe I should do a podcast. It's like, oh, I, you know, I was hooked as soon as I started. It's like, this is so, you know, I can just sort of free flow. I don't have to edit. If I did edit, you know, it would take me an eternity to, to write out all the things that I've talked about, you know, with guests and, you know, on the daily shows that I do alone. Um, so, yeah, I just love this medium. It, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And in and, and audio, I mean, I love video too, but, you know, there's something to be said for being able to listen while you drive or have it as a background. It's like music. It's the only art form that you can really participate in while you're doing other things, you know? And uh, so I love it for that reason. Yeah. For me, it was a huge transformative vehicle because I spent a lot of time in a kind of left brained job capacity on a regular basis, Mm -hmm. which is normal for a lot of people. But whenever you're doing, you know, just shuffling paperwork or whatever, uh, filing or cleaning something or whatever, you can just pop in an earbud and get something that stimulates the right brain, the receptive side of the self and uh, you can start to change the way that your entire inner landscape looks. And I like the way that you explained um, coming to podcasting and realizing that it was a very synergistic tool to speak whenever you're learning a lot through reading and uh, expressing yourself through writing. It actually enhances your ability to speak. And you kind of actually answered the question that I was going to kick off with, which was some... I was going I told to, you this intuitive ability, ability really kicks in. Uh, yeah, I was going to reflect your question of explain your reason uh, for existence to someone you met in an elevator with 10 floors to go. <laughs> oh, burning my question on me. Um, but you kind of <laughs> you kind of answered that already a little bit there. 
Yeah. Um, what is my passion? Yeah, it's just exactly that. It's helping to raise consciousness, helping uh, as you realize you're one with all things uh, and everything, everywhere you go, you're there waiting for yourself and there are no others. And, you know, I'm a, a sort of a fractal of source consciousness, as are you. I'm a focal point living through this particular avatar. As this avatar comes online and remembers who and what it truly is, and everything I see is a reflection of me, the only thing to do is to help wake those other parts of me that maybe haven't come to that realization yet, because if they sleep, it's a part of me that sleeps, and, you know, we're, we're all in this together. So it becomes sort of the, the, the passion of all passions, you know, serving others slash self, depending on the vantage point from what you're looking at it from. Uh, and, uh, that's, that may be more than 10 floors, but that's my passion. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I like to call that the great work as other people have called it, which is, uh, assisting others in reaching a higher state of consciousness. And it is something that is more vitally important than, um, the past because, we have more power as a species through the things that we've created and manifested on the planet and in technology and in the complexities of our societies that there's a great quantum amount of people, a large amount of people doing behavior that is harmful to self, to that overall being. And each and every one of us, as much as we might want to yell and scream at people, stop doing this, stop killing animals, stop, you know, whatever it is that we're, worried about turn around and look in your own bedroom and it, you know there's a huge mess <laughs> so yep. it's, we have to kind of give people the path as we walk it you know reflect it as we walk it because each step that we take is someone else's next step in a way and we can see our next step through the others that have gone before in this path of kind of shedding the destructive uh, behaviors that we collectively do, you know, the field phrase enlightenment is a destructive process. Right. Right. Yeah. That's, uh, that's an important piece to really get is like, there, you know, no matter how far you go, there will be others who have gone before you and there will be others that are behind you in a sense, right. From one perspective, from one vantage point and, um, you know, bringing humility to wherever you're at in the journey, because, um, you know, no matter how far you proceed down the path, you'll never get it done. You'll, you know, there will be eternity. Uh, every new plateau, there will be eternity unfolding uh, and opening before you. So, you know, bringing that humility, knowing, uh, you know, um, we teach best what we most need to learn, as I often say. So I'm not only here uh, progressing myself, but in, in teaching others, but first and foremost, as I always say on my show, it's like, I'm so glad you guys are tuning in and getting something from this because I need it more than anyone, which is why I'm doing it. So <laughs> I think that's a really important piece. Yes. Um, I could not agree more. It's a very powerful form of therapy to be able to reflect upon yourself through hearing your own voice or even just having conversations like this. I know you say you don't do a lot of editing, so it's kind of just the flow of the moment that you, uh, you are always in because you're doing these episodes five days a week. And I was wondering if it requires any other daily practices or disciplines to keep your spiritual frequency in tune to be able to actually connect with higher self or are you, and then are you in enough of a flow with this to kind of even on a day where you don't get things checked in your boxes of, uh, you know, con or frequency elevating practices, you still, feel like you can jump right in? Yeah. Um, great question. Um, yeah. I, you know, meditation is the ultimate superpower. Uh, and I am not as disciplined as probably many listeners are. Many people are. I mean, uh, for me, I'm, I'm, a, I have a lot of, you know, fiery, a lot of energy. It's, it's, so it's more challenging for me to slow myself down. I have a lot on my plate, a lot that I'm doing, uh, you know, my hand in many cookie jars, so to speak. And so really um, taking the time, making the time, I think it is Osho said, you know, if you, um, everyone should meditate 20 minutes a day, unless you're too busy, you should meditate for an hour. Like, so I really work on that part of myself. Um, yoga, I, I um, you know, uh, 
it's definitely yoga practice, not yoga perfect for me. And I do that, uh, you know, usually two, three times a week. Um, but yeah, really the podcast, you know, I, I resonate so strongly with, um, with, with words. It means, you know, a medium that obviously you as well, anyone doing the work we're doing, we have this very close tie to uh, spelling, casting spells, abracadabra, as I speak, I create, right? And so setting your vibrational tone being the most important thing a person can do at any given moment, each and every day. So getting up and starting my day, um, podcasting five days a week, um, really helps me to set my vibrational tone and to manage my vibration and get myself into that right state. And, and so, yeah, that's that's probably my number one thing. But yoga, meditation, uh, certainly are other um, practices that uh, I participate in. Yeah, for me, any of those things that you just mentioned and some other similar practices like Qigong can be the initiating force behind positive chain reactions in your life. And maybe someone out there listening isn't quite to the point where they're ready to wake up in the morning and make a podcast every day, but they are at a point where they do want to start transforming their daily life. And for that, I'm sure you would agree because you're probably a really busy guy. You have a, you know, you have a son and you create this show and I know you're involved with other ventures. So you've got to keep sort of a tight schedule and, to actually stay in, to even initiate that kind of a, a flow of creativity and being there for others. Sometimes people need to start small, like make your bed every day in the morning. Give, you know, uh, give your, brush your cat more often. Something, some little thing, brush your teeth. That's a big one for me. If I'm ever not really feeling it and I go brush my teeth, I feel a little better. Mm -hmm. And then you get mm. that little spark and then you move on to do one more good thing. And instead of seeing it all as this huge, infinite journey to get to where you want to be. Just look at it as one step at a time and you can create that synchronicity chain. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point is putting one foot in, you know, one foot in front of the other, not getting so intimidated by how much, you know, let's say you've got a, an aim or a vision, a project that you want to participate in, not getting intimidated by, um, you know, when you, you look at how big a project can be, um, a lot of times that intimidates people and they just don't do it. And it really, it's all about what is my next step and what is the step that is the most, um, feels, uh, that the best right now. So one practice that I've heard is write, writing these down, uh, of all the things you could do right now, you know, uh, in a given day. And that sometimes works for me, uh, because I'll have so much that I could be doing and so many things that are at different places in, you know, uh, the development or tasks, if you will. So writing down all the things that are a possibility and then looking at them and seeing, okay, what, what resonates the most? Okay, whatever's resonating the most, whatever I feel excitement about, that's probably the direction I should, I should put my energy right now. So if you continue, imagine if you have a never-ending list of possible ways to direct your energy in any given moment and which ones are my highest excitement and you just keep following that, if you do that, uh, you will not only have the most enjoyable journey, I believe that will, even if it doesn't appear to be the quickest path to something, uh, I believe, you know, it's really important to start looking at things from not such a linear, you know, uh, viewpoint. Uh, you know, our higher self can see the chessboard from a perspective that we can't. And oftentimes something that may see counterintuitive from, from our, you know, human brain and viewpoint uh, from a higher perspective is really the optimal path to be to, to go. There's a lot of really juicy stuff to unpack with that. And I would start with saying OCD is actually something that is really commonly suffered from by people even in low degrees and they don't quite realize it through obsessive or compulsive thoughts and um, addictive behaviors that don't serve where you go into unconscious mode and you're not really paying attention to what you're doing and what you're explaining with writing out a list it can be even if you don't have all your you know world saving goals figured out or a plan for them you can write out a list of quite mundane things actually with some of your bigger picture ideas thrown in and just start checking things off the list and it's a form of spelling like you were saying 
you're creating an energetic container for your intention to accomplish this thing, even if it's just like go get more cat litter or something. And I, <laughs> right. So actually, I've heard that you can uh, fight OCD in a really powerful way and retrain your brain if you write these lists out with time attached to them and you get a you create a calendar for yourself for tomorrow and it just has like mm -hmm. you know a space for each hour and you write in everything that you intend to do in whatever order you want and you don't actually have to at all follow the order of the things that are on there although a lot of times it becomes kind of helpful and you end up doing that but instead of your brain being wired to focus on and obsess over things that are sort of stuck in your uh, mental RAM, so to speak, having this right. list that you created, it tells your brain, oh, I've got this stuff to remember. And so it's giving you little reminders like, hey, don't forget the trash has to go out today. Hey, don't forget to brush your teeth. And that is the little voice in your head a little more frequently than the voice that's saying, why don't you do anything <laughs> or whatever, you know? Right, right, right. Yeah, that's a that's a great point. It's like some of these little little tools, little things can make such a big difference. Uh, if uh, you know, even using you know, makes me think of a project management software that I use called Trello. It's it's such a wonderful tool because it's very visual, and you just kind of can create lists and in in columns um, of lists, and you can you can you know, working completed in the middle and make notes with them. And it's just like a very visual, helpful tool for me to manage all the things that, uh, you know, I've got to, uh, I get to do. That's another, <laughs> <laughs> I got to catch myself there. Spelling, right? As, as I speak, I create. So just instead of saying I've got to do something, what's the difference in the energy of I get to do? And um, so that's one that I've worked on a lot in the last year or so. And I talk a lot about on the show. So I'm glad I, I just, uh, slipped up and did that because it leads me into that that point. You get to do these things that uh, are uh, lingering out there. And the fact that you're here is such a gift. You know, the present is a gift. It's called the present because it's the present. You're here. You get to work through all of these things and grow. And sometimes they're as mundane as getting cat litter, but that can be beautiful in itself if you bring the right energy and quality uh, of perspective to it. You know, I like to say every moment is as divine as any other moment ever has been or will be. The, the only missing element in it is you bringing that knowing and perspective to it changes the quality of the, of the experience. And a big part of that is start, start saying I get to instead of got to. Because, um, you know, I think back to uh, a meeting. My friend was talking to this woman who's a, uh, a shaman lives down in South America and she's incredible energy and, you know, intuitive abilities and whatnot. And she was talking to my friend, uh, Shane about, you know, his life and saying, look, Shane, do you realize how gifted you are and lucky you are to be here? How many souls line up and wait for the opportunity, the right circumstances and parents and situation to fully express and experience themselves? Don't, be frivolous about it. Don't, you know, you get to do this. You, you, you know, and, and so often we get lost in sort of, Oh, my life's mundane. This, this thing is mundane. And of course, by viewing it that way, you create it being that way. You bring that magic to it and you transform it. And you now have a glimpse of the types of things you're going to attract more of. Uh, and that's really the pathway to seeing everything that you want next is to love where you sit. And uh, a lot of people are resisting where they sit. I've got to do this. I don't want this. You're, you know, what you resist persists, what you accept, you move through. And um, so, you know, bringing all, all true spiritual work, spiritual practices, the alchemy of changing your perspective, sifting and shifting your perspective to uh, seeing things as your higher self sees things. I, you get to do this. And it is uh, a true blessing to be in physical period. Well, when your higher self is enhancing your perspective, what is happening is you are seeing things through a lens of love and compassion. And that is also hand in hand with the recognition of the expanded potentials that are in with that, whatever the object of your love is, which is also subject because it is not separate from you. So whenever you love that object, whatever it is, a person or a situation or the world or yourself, 
it enhances your imaginary capacity to see those higher potentials and then move towards them because you can't really go anywhere that you don't at least have the capacity to imagine first. And that right. is an intuition thing too, because knowing that you can go there is the same as is another side of the imagination in a sense. It's that gut feeling that tells you that you are on the right path. And a lot of times you'll even get, you know, great synchronicities and signs whenever you start moving on your path. And they're actually always there and always all around you. But having that perspective of I've got to do something and it, it kind of has a very attachment connotation like I've got to have this as opposed to I get to do this has an abundance connotation. I get this. Yep. You know what I mean? Uh, so yeah. it's a completely flipping that mental construct is very important because wherever you're at, even if it's at a job that you don't particularly want to be at forever, you still have the opportunity to serve others, whether it's through the capacity of what you're doing for the work or more importantly, the great work that we're doing here in this type of conversation, which is actually kind of difficult to take out of here sometimes and speak these type of truths like, hey, did you know you're one with everything? To Dave, the middle-aged you know, salesman at the office who's like, never thought right. about this, at least that you can tell. But you would be surprised what people have thought about if you actually get yeah. in there and engage them. That's that. Yeah, that is true. And it's, you know, I always say as someone who is, you know, teaching from one perspective, uh, a lot of the time, it's like, uh, you know, uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we teach best what we most need to learn. I would say I'm always a student first and a teacher second, but um, there's nothing I can teach or tell anyone that they don't already know. It's a matter of remembering what we've forgotten. We've, we're all here with amnesia. Like, and that's the game. That is the 3D game. You come into 3D, you're an eternal being that's always been and always will be. You cut yourself off from those memories to some degree, and then you play the game of starting to let them sink in, seep in slowly, with some more uh, quickly, with some very slowly, and everything in between. And so I always say, hey, there's nothing I can teach Dave in the, in the middle-aged guy working you know, in, in the office that he doesn't already know. I may be able to help remind him what his soul has uh, got hiding back in the vault, right? Um, so yeah, that's what I really refer to myself. I mean, if you go to the Positive Head Instagram, it's like chief waker upper and reminder at the Positive Head podcast because that's really all it is. It's just reminding. None of us are more powerful, intrinsically more powerful or gifted than any other. Some of us may be tapping into that more than others but it's in there. We're all fractals of the same source consciousness and we all have this knowledge there waiting to be unpacked when the time is right. And, and you know, there's a trajectory to that that's unique for each one of us. We separate from source. We, we, you can't know that which you are until you know that which you are not. And some of us are still very much in the knowing, experiencing that which we are not phase. And so, you know, we're not, we don't need to judge that. I believe we've all been there, done it got the t-shirt for every experience you could ever have. And, you know, eternity is a long time. You've done it all. So I think that's a really important piece to, to, to know that you, whoever you are listening, you have all this wisdom inside of you. And even now, the fact that you're tuning into this broadcast and you're hearing, uh, you know, Chance and I talk about this, it's because you're out of 7 billion people on the planet and certainly an unending plethora of media vying for your attention, you're tuning into this broadcast because it is such a close vibrational reflection to a part of you that it's actually bumped in up and, you know, it's, it's sort of jockeyed for position and uh, splashed on your screen because it's such a close vibrational reflection of you, um, you know, in, in this case. So even if you feel like you may be far away from a lot of this, you're really not because you're here listening. <laughs> Very true. It, to me, sometimes listening to my favorite podcasters feels like it's just a voice in my head that I go to whenever I want to tune in to a certain type of frequency. In a way, it is because all of our experiences are happening in our own personal projector of this 3D shared consensus reality. And I think one of the reasons, you know, as you're speaking, something kind of came to my realization, and it's maybe a little obvious, but the question of why would we actually go through the process of forgetting everything 
and experiencing that which we are not and moving back towards our true source one step at a time. And because we've already established and it seems very clear that that progression is a progression towards a higher understanding experience and feeling of love, then what we're doing is actually just one of the things that is the greatest part of life in the small sense, which is falling in love deeper and further. So in our lives, we have, you know, these experiences of small, uh, lowercase l love, but then as our soul progresses through lifetimes, we're getting deeper and deeper into the capital L higher self love. And it is a fun game. And I think one of the reasons why you and I do what we're doing isn't to create followers or students of our supposed wisdom. And in fact, it's not even our information. What we are, right. at least if you're like me, then you're just seeking to create other teachers of this information. I'm hoping that whoever you are listening right now, you become the master of sharing and, and creating other masters. And then the experience, then the fractal um, exponential growth rate of our collective profound realization that we are all one will allow us to extremely rapidly transform the planet. And I wanted to ask you some uh, some questions about your community. Like, are you getting, you know, reflections back from your po- your p heads, as they're called, of <laughs> you know some like big spiritual growth and and creating you know this type of material in their own way? Yeah, you know, um, uh, yeah, I will answer that. And then the one other thing that I wanted to to uh, just quickly chime in on was you were saying, you know, well, why forget? It's like, you can't know that which you are unless you know that which you are not. We are love, we are eternal, we are all these things. But if, if it's one, if God or source, our higher self, whatever you want to call it, is one, and it is love, and that's all there is, that means nothing. There's nothing else. So it needs the contrast in order to fully, you know, separate yourself from that, experience hate, pain, separation, doubt, then come back to it, and now it has a whole new you know, it's, it's new again, right? You, this is the way we experience newness in eternity, which sort of are contradictory concepts, right? So, but we're such creative geniuses, our higher self is, this is the, the, the way it, it, it does that. Um, so I just wanted to kind of throw my two cents on that. But yeah, as far as uh, the, the P heads, as I so I affectionately call the positive head listeners, um, we have a Facebook group, Positive Heads, um, that's a private group and, you know, people joining every day and connecting and opening up and sharing and, you know, it's, it's private because it, so people can get really personal if they don't want to, you know, open up to maybe all of Facebook or the, or the world at large with some of the, their, their thoughts or questions as they, you know, journey down their own path of self-discovery. And what I'm seeing is, yeah, there's been, uh, I've been such a, such a, a a proud father in one sense of seeing <laughs> several podcasters come out of the group. And um, there's, uh, you know, Ross from Spiritual Phoenix. There's Nixie Marie who, um, who does uh, uh, a podcast, the um, Goddess Collective, I believe she's calling it. Um, it's Goddess something. I think it's Goddess Collective. Um, and she's podcasting and there, there are actually a, a few others that have talked about starting a podcast I know. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been really nice to play even a small role. You know, some of these people were probably predispositioned to do this and just to have that little spark of nudge of, Oh yes, you can. And I believe in you and, you know, and then now of course they're just sort of, uh, grow, growing on their own and doing their own thing. And it's, it's so magical to see, like you said, I just want to, uh, if I can touch one person. You never know. It's that butterfly effect. You may only touch one person with your own work, your own way of, of sort of contributing to uh, the awareness expansion that's happening on our planet, whether through a podcast, through a blog, through just having a one-on-one conversation with someone. But, but you that never one know person, what that, that one person's yeah. infinite. They're an infinite yep. being themselves. Right. Exactly. And you, so you never know what that, that is going to be. And that's why, you know, you've probably heard the, the, the quote, uh, I forget exactly who said it, but um, yesterday I was smart, so I wanted to, you know, change the world. Today I'm wise, and I want to change myself. And why? Because first off, by doing it to yourself, you do it to the whole, because there, the whole is a reflection of you. 
And that is the ground zero for everything. And that is the mo- that's the most powerful shift anyone, the best way anyone can contribute to uh, the, the whole is through themselves, you know, first and foremost. So even if that's the only person that you're, uh, you know, touching in a sense uh, and expanding the awareness of. But, um, you know, what you find oftentimes is as this stuff sort of crystallizes in your mind and heart and these a lot of these truths and understandings and you apply some of them to your life and you see the benefit of applying them to your life, it becomes like a natural progression to, uh, you know, as Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Why? Because there are no others, you know? Um, he didn't say the why part. I added that. Um, so, you know, (laughs) there are no others. So whenever you're serving others, you're going to find the opportunity to give away what you want for yourself to others. And, I always say, do it, do it, do it, because that it, you will feel the energetic repercussions because you're always doing it yourself because the extensions of self. Yeah, and I, I, what you made me think there is that, you know, there's that old phrase of knowing the truth without acting on it is the same thing as not knowing it. But what the truth really is, is what we've been repeatedly saying, which is that we are all one, the, the self that experiences the feeling of I-ness is the same I-ness that every other self feels in creation. So right. you don't have to be in service to any one person or any one group. And sometimes you can get a little even caught up with, uh, with that. And what you should be in service to maybe is truth itself, because that, that truth itself is the, you know, the one within all that we're describing. And, um, that means maybe even having to speak out against some of the things that our culture does that is physically restrictive for us, like the fact that we have to use the um, Federal Reserve debt notes that are connected to so much shadiness and, you know, into war, into uh, suffering, and, and that there's a big cultural trend of, you know, kind of mass ritual slaughter of animals that is totally ignored. And it's not fun to look at the deep shadow stuff. and to an extent, getting overly focused on how wrong everything is can be not useful. But I think, you know, I want to know what you think about facing the extreme, extreme shadow of some aspects of our current human condition in recent history, you know, like known conspiracy facts. <laughs> how do you approach yeah. that type of stuff? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's, it's a very touchy, uh, tricky conversation uh, for a lot of people, especially in this in this line of work and uh you know as you sort of expand your spiritual uh, awareness how do you deal with this stuff that as you pointed out is sort of from one perspective broken from another perspective it's perfectly imperfect right and so it's really um what how i approach this um is uh, as mother Teresa, uh i think of as a famous figure you know nobel peace prize winner she was asked um, to march against the war in Vietnam. And she said, I can never do that, but have a march for peace and I'll be there. And the reason she said that is because she understood what you resist persists. What you, um, before something and against nothing is what I say. And that's hard. And sometimes these, as, uh, uh, Abraham or Esther Hicks, uh, talks about this. I actually just talked about this on my show last week. Um, she's like a lot of these, like, first level um, reactions are necessary part of it, but really it's, you know, let's say reacting the civil rights movement or mothers against drunk driving, these first iterations against something, they're they're stage one, um, um, you know, physical actions in a sense against something. But really what's so much more powerful is getting into alignment with the change. And so being very careful not to push hard against what it is that you don't want because you have so much energy in a day. You have so, it's, and energy is neutral. What you do with it determines whether it's positive or negative. So if I'm beating the drum of this is wrong, this is bad, this is wrong, this is bad, this is wrong, here's what's broken, here's what's, what am I vibrating with? And if I'm a creator, what, what am I creating? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm swimming in the vibrational pool of what's wrong and what's bad and what's broken. And as a result, as a creator, if you want to know what you'll see tomorrow, look at what you're feeling today. It's out there. There is no out there. It's a vibrational reflection of the energy you're emitting, right? So 
we've got to be really careful with this because we're, you know, we're giving energy to that which we don't want. So I would say a more powerful action is to say, hmm, I'm, instead of being against that, I understand it's here. It's, it's serving the story that Source wants to play out. You can't know good without bad. You can't know left without right. You can't know up without down. It's playing a purpose in the unfolding, in the journey. Now, where do I shift my attention to say what I'm for and to give energy? And it may be in contrast to that, but I'm not fighting against that. You know, who, who was it that said the best way to, um, to um, get rid of the old is not to fight against it, but to put your energy into the new? You know, that's how you really make change. And so I, you know, and that's a tricky one. And it's a lot of people, you know, but this is an atrocity. This is an atrocity. Okay, let's not feed it then. Let's feed something that's, will replace, something that will make it obsolete, right? And get enough people in alignment with what will make it obsolete that it then can't even hold itself together anymore because there's no energy supporting it. Uh, on the ener energetic sense, what you say definitely is comprehensive like you know you don't want to just fight against something without coming up with a solution because then all that's happening is you know two opposing forces just canceling each other out in a sense it's more important to just revoke your own support and participation with things that you no longer think are uh, serving you or that you can see as objectively morally wrong and if you do you know, if you do have something that you're going to remove from your behavior or you're going to change, it's perfectly all right to explain to people why you're doing it and the, you know, negative repercussions of what might be occurring in their own life as a result of a certain practice. Like, hey, drink, I quit drinking soda. And you have a friend that you would always get a Coke with and your friend's like, oh, why aren't you drinking soda? And you can explain to them and it might actually be helpful for them to hear the sort of negative side of things, mm -hmm. you know, see the, see the shadow reflection. So the important thing is that whenever you try to convince somebody that you're right and they're wrong, they pretty much always lock up and fight you on it yeah. no matter what. And then they're stuck in defending their position instead of having an open mind. So you have to kind of let people have their position on things, but you also have to speak your truth, including shining light towards something that's dark, but not in a way where you're fighting it through Right. Inact What's the intention and energy behind that shining? Like, you have to you put know, your action with your intention. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Bringing, bringing, um, bringing light to the shadow. You know, it's like, it's like there, there really is no shadow. It's an absence of light. So exactly. bring light to it. Bring light to uh, whatever it is from a place of love, not of judgment not of pointing a finger, not of any of those things. Everyone is acting rational based off their view of the world. And uh, if you can understand that, and they're playing their role in their own unique unfolding and reconnection with source in their own story, you know, their own trajectory. And so, you know, it's super important for us to understand that. And um, to, to, it doesn't mean we agree, uh, but to bring that, um, that, unconditional love to whatever it is and whatever it is that you know they're doing it doesn't mean you approve of it doesn't mean you support it but when when you move into judgment it's like a lack of understanding that everyone has their own unique way and sometimes people have to find their way back to love or source through you know negative interactions it's 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 a part of it's a part of the game it's it's part of 3D this you know you're in a world of so much duality in contrast this is the realm of light and dark and left and right and male and female and up and down and hot and cold this is where we're at and because of that friction it it, it enables the opportunity for growth uh, that we we don't have in other realms i believe and it's why we want to come here yeah so the morality thing you know there's an objective truth to right and wrong in some cases if you saw somebody or somebody told you, uh, you have to do, you have to beat up this person in front of me here and take their wallet. You can say no to that. And that's, part, that's the divine masculine aspect actually of, you know, saying, saying no to what is harmful or what harms others or yourself. But if you are at a higher vibrational level personally, and you're not even 
you know, as opposed to focusing on that type of a situation, you're not really going to run into it. You know, you might, if it's kind of like the type of thing where someone that carries a gun starts seeing all kinds of places where they could use it. And they start imagining Mm -hmm. situations all the time. Like I'm going to get mugged when I go down this alley. So you can't focus on, you know, what you're going to do to stop evil. Instead, focus on what it is that you want to create and bring into the world. And if it so happens that something crosses your path that is wrong that you can say no to, then definitely, you know, in, embrace that and say no, because, because it's an infinite, <laughs> infinite hologram of experiences that we're able to access. That means we could actually start accessing experiences that we don't want. And that will only serve to teach us who we are by showing us what we're not. But we also don't have to choose the suffering program as soon as we are aware that we don't have to choose it. That can be sort of an old tool that we put down until maybe another cycle when it becomes relevant again. Yeah, it's a it's a really important piece, you know, to to start understanding there. You are a focal point of source, you know, that everything the way I view it is I'm the center of my own universe. You're a prop in my movie. And everything is just uh, there happening as a reflection of me. I'm the, I'm the center of my own universe and vice versa. I'm a prop in your movie that reflects back a part of your consciousness. And not only is that the case, but we've taken on a lot of the beliefs of this quote unquote out there, the cultural norm, the, this extension of ourselves that's told us here's the way reality is. And then we've signed up for it. Well, as you progress uh, in your own realization that you are at the center of your own, you know, epic adventure and tale that is your life, you can start rewriting the rules of the story. You can start rewriting what it is, you know, every time you find yourself falling into a negative or fear-based thought or something like that, catch yourself and say, oh, hold on, I'm going to write a whole new truth. You know, I catch myself sometimes dealing with, you know, fearful thoughts or what have you. And that's one of the ways that it's really, I'm helping to um, to dissolve them and say, oh, hold on, I'm just telling myself this story, this is how it works. And I've got to go through this contrast to experience all this light and, you know, and, and hold on, I'm just making that up and I can make up a whole new story. And this is, you know, literally your own universe and you get to write the rules in a way that uh, reflect the journey and the ride that you want to take. And it doesn't mean that there won't ever be things that pop out a pop in that your higher self has put there that you don't consciously think of and put there. And those are the moments you wrap your arms around it and say, okay, it must be exactly what I need. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to love it up, you know? And, uh, but you know, anytime you're having those fearful thoughts, stop and say, hold on, where are those coming from? They're coming from a story. They're coming from a story that you're telling yourself. And this is all make believe in a sense, in a very good way. So make up a whole new story about the way things work in your reality. That's brilliant. And it reminds me of an article I read before we started talking by a friend of mine named Yura Soul. I mean, I don't know what his birth (laughs) certificate name is, but he goes online as Yura Soul and he is a brilliant writer. And he put out this sort of channeled higher consciousness uh, musing about the nature of fear, which he decided was an acronym standing for false evidence against reality. And the reality that he's describing is that you have the infinite power of every situation to change anything, survive anything, be anything that is what you desire and you want. But whenever you are having fear thoughts, what's happening is you've perceived a loss of personal power or you're expecting a loss of personal power. And as soon as you can make the realization that, oh, the reason why I'm thinking that I've lost personal power is because of some attachment to a cultural idea or belief. If you can go through your own mental forest of, you know, the growth of one belief system and find all the way to the root of where that came from, then you can just go, oh, I can, I can cut change this it. one down. Yeah. Or whatever. I can change it. Exactly. Yeah. Pull the weeds. <laughs> yeah. You know, what you just said made me think of, um, you know, and a lot of times we run from our fears because we think, you know, oh, this is something that's true. This is something, this is a story that I've signed up for. And as a result, and I don't want to face it And you know, instead, uh, I've heard fear. I love, I love, uh, you know, false evidence. Did you say false evidence appearing real? 
Appearing real, yeah. Or you could yeah, also yes. say against reality because the reality, against reality. Is like, you could do either acronym. I think I may have got it wrong and you got it right with appearing real. Yeah, so that, well, there's a bunch of them. So there's, here's, here's one. You got two choices. Forget everything and run or <laughs> face, ever, face everything and rise, right? Nice. So, you know, face those fears. Understand that you just have created them based off of some stories and beliefs that you've signed up for. Uh, you know, unsubscribe to that newsletter. I love what you just said. Like, it, it's it, it's really brilliant. I, I want to read this article now. Um, you know, him saying it's you have you have basically opted for a story of that where you're going to lose personal your your power. Well, that's completely false based off of who and what you are. You have all the power all the time. So, you know, if that's happening, you, you're, you're, you, that should be like a, uh, you, you know, like a, you know, how those speed bumps when you're going off, you're falling asleep and drifting off the road. It's like, <laughs> you know, that you're hitting those bumps on the side of the road, get back on the course. If, uh, if you are feeling like your personal power is slipping away and it's tied to fear because you are all, you are the power that created all of this. Actually, you are all powerful. And, you know, you are, yes, you are a fractal of source and you're, you, you know, a drop out of the ocean in a sense, but the ocean is also contained within the drop. And uh, when you understand both of those truths, you know, it's this divine dichotomy. You and I are separate. You and I are one. You are the drop separate from the ocean, but the ocean is also contained in the drop. That's where your power comes from. Absolutely. And when you, whenever one mind, since the whole universe is basically a mental construct, Whenever one mind realizes that another part of the mind is a part of it, they become non-separate, literally, because the mind is where they're generated from and the mind is where the realization was made. So things that you realize are you pretty much cannot hurt you unless you allow them to. That goes for like non-physical entities that you might feel are bothering you. You can actually yep. immediately transform that when you realize that's actually just an idea you have. Or it goes for when you're driving and you're starting to fall asleep and you start getting scared that you're going to fall asleep at the wheel. And then you start getting more tired and more scared because of that. And you're like, oh, shit, I can't stay awake. Ugh. But actually, whenever I'm in that moment, I've realized that if I just tell myself I'm going to be alert and aware, I'm going to wake up now and I just do some breathing, it, it's crazy how much energy you can get out of that. And I wish I could remember yeah. that whenever I'm unconsciously reaching for the third cup of coffee in a day and just give myself that kind of mental boost because it is a lot healthier probably. But back yeah. to uh, that article, I'm definitely going to link it because it was super good. Just like everything he writes over on steam it. If you're familiar with that new platform and no, I'm not, I, I would actually recommend if you liked his work, getting him on the show because he's an extremely profound and spiritually wise individual. And uh, I've had him on my show before. I, I plan to get him back soon because he's, you know, just another very close reflection to you and I and this whole thing and uh, over cool. in England somewhere, start wrapping things up. So really, really big thank you for coming on the show. This was a very much needed therapy chat, just like a lot of these podcasts inevitably end up being. And I look forward to putting this out there to people and I look forward to continuing my one-sided friendship with you through a uh, positive head as a listener and uh, maybe get you back on here again in the future and, and pick up where we left yeah. off. Yeah. Likewise. I'll have to have you on as well sometime. And uh, it's been awesome chance to, to connect with you. You're doing amazing work here and you certainly are a beautiful reflection uh, right down to the same shirt and your crystal staff. And uh, I appreciate uh, also connecting with you or I look forward to rather connecting with you in 3d when the time is right. Do you have anything you want to promote other than your website, positivehead.com and the podcast of the same name? Yeah, yeah. You guys can check out. Uh, that's pretty much primarily it. Yeah, check out the Positive Head podcast. I do the show five days a week, as I mentioned. I have interviews on Wednesdays and then Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's me taking questions from listeners, just sort of talking about whatever bubbles up in my own life. The amount of synchronicity, you know, I always ask stories of synchronicity and stuff like that. And the amount of synchronicity around the episodes and the timing of them. It's so fun when you play with the universe in that way. And I'm actually developing an app right now that will be coming out in the new year that uh, allows for some of that as well. Uh, and for people to help create content and, you know, and everything. So it's amazing. 
Well, man, thanks for being that person that's a few steps ahead of me on the path that I can see where they're going and what they've done and be inspired by that part of myself that is capable that I see in you. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can both keep doing this for a long time, you know? Yes, indeed, my friend. You certainly uh, are doing an amazing job. And this has been absolutely effortless your you know your your delivery and your way of connecting you're you're very easy and, and enjoyable to talk to and you had so many good tidbits for me uh certainly a therapy therapy session for me as well i love some of the things that you shared so keep on doing what you're doing my friend thanks brother that means a lot uh much love and everybody make sure you check out brandon's work so that's all for the free show folks do you feel as charged up by brandon's enthusiasm and energy as i do I'm so glad to have had this wonderful consciousness jam session of oversoul harmonic frequency alignment. And that's not just a bunch of new agey words thrown together to sound smart. It's a bunch of new agey words and a description of what I felt like happened in this conversation. A real expansion of my own personal awareness of the intentions I have for doing what I do. As mirrored to me in a fellow podcaster and spiritual questor slash questionor, as usual, some of the very juiciest parts of the convo came out in the Plus extension where topics included Brandon explaining some of the profound things he's learned from guests on his show and the possibility that people in our lives who we perceive as difficult are some of the dearest and closest to us on a soul level from lifetime to lifetime and synchronicities about his birthday, business, betrayal, and forgiveness and Brandon's thoughts on psychedelics and entheogenic plant medicines and the children's book version of the story of the fall of mankind into matter. That was really cool. And plenty more about the dynamics of fear, control, love, and freedom. And more than that, I can't tell you everything we talked about or there'd be nothing left to the mystery, right? So I hope you enjoyed the show. And if you liked it so much that you want to hear the rest of our talk, make sure you check the show notes for links to patreon.com forward slash interverse where you can make a voluntary donation to get access to this and all the previous extended content episodes I've done for Plus. You'll get your very own private feed where episodes will be uploaded sometimes several days early, and you'll get occasionally entirely bonus Plus episodes featuring chats with people from the Interverse subscriber community. That's barely even scratching the surface of what's waiting for you when you subscribe to the show on Patreon, so I really do hope you take a gander at the rest of the rewards and consider lending a little support to my creation of this work, you know, if you're a weekly listener. Because, although most of you are free listeners, and I love that, I'm all about freedom, it's also true that I spend a considerable amount of time each week devoted to creating this free show, and if it's been something you like, or has been helpful to you, or any of those things, well then you're free to make a voluntary donation and even get some perks for that. That's not the only way you could help the podcast though, so if you like this episode, I'd be thrilled to see you share it on SoundCloud, Facebook, Minds, Twitter, or any other social media you like to share things through. And you can also leave a review on iTunes to the podcast app on your computer. I'd like to copy something Brandon does and read iTunes reviews on the show, so all the more reason to go out there and write one, right? It helps us get discovered by new people as well. And I know I've said a lot about Interverse Plus and Patreon, but I want to offer you something that involves two of my favorite words put together. Free sample. If you want to try out one of the extended episodes of Interverse without making the commitment to Patreon, I'm willing to share one free Plus episode with you if you reach out and contact me. Ultimately, my goal for creating this show isn't to get a million subscribers or attract a great deal of wealth or to become a celebrity. I'm here because I had an idea that if I could somehow share my own journey to creative empowerment and a more lucid and informed experience of reality, then hopefully some of you out there could see the steps on your path more brightly and believe in your own power to start taking those steps and never stop. I know that my dream is somehow probably quite similar to Brandon's ultimate goal in podcasting, so I want to express how grateful I am to the, that he came out to Interverse and was such an energetic and excellent guest. If you don't go subscribe to the Positive Head Podcast and check out some episodes that seem interesting, you're missing out on one of my favorite gems out there in the audio infotainment format. But that's all for me, friends. I'll be back next week with another inspired interview with the return of Linda Clay to the show for a chat about healing from grief. Thank you for checking out this episode of Interverse. I love you, and don't forget to be nice to your mom. Talk to you next week.